Hello, before I could go ahead and tell you all about how to declare a variable in your Java programs, let me tell you something awesome and interesting. If you want to execute your Java code real quick without opening an IDE or without even installing a compiler or JDK, you can just do that instantly if you are online. Just open up your browser and then type onlinegdb.com. Now this service is really awesome. Now here you can even write C, C++, Java, Python, or these are the language selections that you can do. On the top right corner, select this drop down. Okay, all these languages are available. And if you want to run Java, then just choose Java as the language. And you can see that you can write your code here. That is the default code written by this online editor. You can just go ahead and check out this. You can just hit this run button and it's going to run. And you're going to get the output at the bottom. You see that? That hello world has been printed there. Now you can share this code by hitting on this share button. You can save this. Although you need to create an account, I think for saving the code online. Or you can beautify, that means you can always indent your code instantly. And even you can debug so if you want to execute your code instantly without uh, installing your JDK or any other language compiler on your system, then you can do this online instantly using this online GDB. Okay, so let's get back to Eclipse now. Now, before I could start, let me increase the font size there. It's really small. Just go to Windows Preferences and there under General Appearance, Colors, and fonts. Okay, here I can increase the size of font. I'm hitting the edit button and then 12, that will be good, I think. Okay, apply and close. Yeah, that increased a bit. In Java, we cannot declare anything globally. Java does not support global scope. That means we cannot declare a variable or a method globally in Java like C or C++ programs. Now, everything has to be within a class. As you can see that, I have declared that main method within the class hello. Now, what is a class? I'm going to discuss about the class in details. That is the basic building block of object-oriented programming. Everything in object-oriented programming evolves around this keyword class. And you must understand what is a class and I'm going to discuss in details about that. But for the time being, a class is a way to create user-defined types. Now, we can divide the data types broadly in two categories. One, the implicit types or the inbuilt types which are available in the language as keywords like int, char, float, long, and double. So these are the keywords which are available within the compiler. And we can use these data types in order to create a variable there in our program and can hold data. But these are not sufficient enough to describe all the data that we need to represent in our program and to process. So they have given us the flexibility so that we can create our own data types and that we can do using the keyword class. So using the keyword class, we can create user defined types or explicit types. Now these Keywords are called implicit types. Implicit types. Primarily, we are going to use these implicit types in our Java program in order to understand various basic things of the Java programs. Now, we need to understand user-defined types, how we can create user-defined types using class and various aspects of that. And I'm going to discuss all of these things in details. But for the time being, as you understood, Class is a way to create user-defined types. And there are hundreds of thousands of classes already created in the standard Java library. And that is the important thing that you need to understand now. Now, this string is a class, as you can see, that we can use to represent a string. That means set of characters within double quote. In Java, anything that is represented within double quote is a string object. Now, the system is also a class. You can see that, right? That S is capital. That's the library class. 
that's given in the library that string is also given in the library okay so there are hundreds of thousands of classes already available in the standard java library that you can use in your java program and they are readily available as you can see we have made use of that system class in order to print something into the console like that there are classes in order to input data from keyboard there are classes in order to write data into a file or read data from a file or creating a socket for every purpose you'll find a suitable class there in the standard java library and even if you do not find a class uh, for doing your task in standard java library you can just search on the web if someone else has created a class for doing something what you want then you can just get it downloaded on your system and can use that class is a way to create user defined types and always what you need to do is to declare the methods within the class or the variables within the class and how all these things goes i'll be discussing in details later on for the time being main is the method that is going to be executed first by the jvm when you execute your java program main is the first method that will be actually called by the jvm java virtual machine or java runtime environment okay so what you need to do is to at least have a main method within your class in order to get your program executed now this public indicates that this main method is accessible to any programming resource which is outside of this class hello now that main method as you can see that's inside of the class hello right in order to access this main method which is inside of this class hello this main method must be public now since the jvm is going to call this main method so this main method has to be a public method otherwise jvm won't be able to call this it won't be able to access this now this static indicates something that a method can be accessed using the class name we don't need to create instance of that class in order to access that main method now what is an instance that we'll understand when we will learn class instance is nothing but an object a real allocation so we just don't need to really allocate the hello object in order to get that main executed how the jvm is going to make this call this main method it is going to just make a call like this hello dot main using that class name it will be able to make a call to this main method that is possible because that main is static within the class hello now if you create a method that is static you can also make a call to that method using the class name okay that is really possible and that is what the static means you can access that method just by using the class name dot method name void means you are telling that the main method is not going to return anything on completion now this is what we call command line argument and i'll have a complete lecture on this so if you want to execute your java program from terminal and you want to pass some uh, data to the main method then you can pass them here while running the program from the terminal or command line i'll show you how to do that so this is array of strings so we can pass many arguments from command line or terminal i'll show you how to do that and how that passing parameters from command line is going to be helpful in your programs so don't worry about that right now but in java you always need to write this even if you do not pass any command line parameters you always need to do this so that's an array of strings and you can name this array anything it could be anything else other than this args okay that's all about the basic understanding of the main method and now let me tell you how you can declare a variable in java first the data type and then the name of the variable say value so value is a variable of type integer now you can go through any online resource for learning the different kinds of data types i will have some there in the description what are the available data types inbuilt data types in java so you can go through them int is a keyword that can be used to declare a variable which is going to hold only the integer values now if you are interested of keeping double values then you can declare the variable as double say my sale amount 
So that's the variable that's going to keep a double value. That means the real number. Now in Java, all the real constants are represented in double by default. So if you are actually representing 5.67, it's going to be in double. So that is going to be by default allocated in as double. Now that is the way by which you can declare a variable in Java. Now there is a new thing in Java 10. In Java 10, you just don't need to mention the data type. It's going to be inferred by the Java compiler. So you can use the keyword where in order to declare a variable if you're not sure about the type. So if I go ahead and declare this, say uh, data one equals five, then it's okay in Java 10. Now, if you are using that var keyword in order to declare your variable, then you must initialize the variable. You just cannot declare a variable without the initialization using var. As you can see that it is showing compilation error. And if I hover on this to get the error, you can see that cannot use var on variable without initializer. You always must initialize your variable when you declare that using var. So data one is going to be of type integer implicitly. Now, if you declare something like this, data two equals 10.75, it's going to be of double type. Okay, so since that is a real kind of value, so it's going to be inferred as double. So that will be taken care of implicitly by the language compiler. So where is the new keyword that, that is introduced with Java 10? Now, you can only declare a variable locally within a method using var. You cannot declare a variable using var as class variable. Now I'm going to talk about the class variables later on, just giving you the information right here. Okay, so keep it in your mind that using var, you can declare local variables only in Java. So that's all about this tutorial. Join me in the next tutorial to understand some more fundamental things of Java programming. Here I'll be discussing about the operators, um, the arithmetical operators, logical operators, and all other fundamental operators that you may need while writing your Java programs. And these are pretty same with the C and C++ language. So if you are convergent with C and C++, you may consider skipping the next video. Thank you for watching this. Thanks again for watching this.